I would like to introduce Jenny Elizabeth Jones and Jenny's tribe. Jenny is from Framingham, and she said that she grew up in a house full of instruments all over the place, which undoubtedly has had its influence on all that she has achieved in music making and in story and in art and in connecting stories to life and talking about challenge, spirit, and transformation. Jenny is a multi-instrumentalist, a lyricist, a songwriter, a composer, and a visionary of this program you're about to see, Jenny's Tribe. This program has been debuted about two years ago, and also of the tribe, you will see Donnie Schultz and Suzanne Fredette. They have a 18-track CD, Hollow Body Heal, that is the result of recording of this program and available today. And just to leave you with a little quote before they begin, you will see a little storytelling, a little movement, a little drum and rain stick, a little making of art on canvas, and of course the original songs that inspired this program, which we are honored to see a sample of this morning. So please give a warm round of applause for Jenny's Tribe. What does it mean when I'm not angry anymore as I stand next to them who hate me, who harm me, will harm me again? What does it mean when I move beyond the firing line without a glance? Without defense, without invisible hands around my neck. What does it mean when I make my enemy strong? Tell the enemy the truth, even when it could bring me harm. Where is the love? Where is release? Brotherhood and peace. Where is the love? Teamwork, family, and these. Where is the love? Protecting and sharing and peace.
times He can see my spirit new Lord, pull the tesseracts a distance So we can share the sacred truth Lord, shelter me from judging mine So we can send our energy through Lord, heal my wounds, let my soul fly And love pierce me through I grow cold Just as I forget As I move what I expect Send him to my dreams With alarming presence Lord Pull me through corridors of time So he can see my spirit new Lord Till the tesseracts are distance So we can share the sacred truths Lord Shelter me from judging my
Someday someone I love will also dig me. Someday my insides will be healthy and I will run free. Someday life will feel like an adventure taken in stride. Don't know when, I don't know why. Spirit, come to me. Spirit, come to me. Spirit, come to me. Spirit, come to me. I had a dream once, well, really a thought. I'd been lying awake deep in the night. Sleeplessness was aching and stinging my entire body, jolting me bit by bit over and over, making me angry as I rolled around, tossed and turned, tortured in my misery. This thought jumped into my mind and tempted me to be free. If I really thought, if I really understood that abundance surrounds me, then I'd be able to relax and find peace. And at that moment, the thought passed through my conscious mind. I fell asleep and into a sumptuous dream. You are a spirit. I am making you a spirit. In this place where I sit, I am making you a spirit. When my father lay dying, the red in my blood taught me how to sing to him. And after he passed, he sang to me in my dreams. Sometimes I woke up sobbing with grief, sometimes laughing out loud. But always he showed me things I'd never seen. He came once with sacred stars on his modern day buffalo robe. Silver bits so hard to see, they were so bright. He came to give them out to the men still here and still untold. Give out these bits of courage, these bits of light. As a man arrived, dad would hand the light to that man, a light so he could see his own worth. We did the best we could to give out these bits of courage, but we could see and feel their anguish and their hurt. Some men could see and hear my father, dead as he was, some could only hear his voice and fear crept in. But dad passed his hand over all and gave them calm. Our bodies all glowed love, the gift taken in. You are a spirit. I am making you a spirit. In this place where I sit, I am making you a spirit. You are a spirit. I am making you a spirit. In this place where I sit, I am making you a spirit. To me. Someday, moment by moment, my head will be clear and cloud free. I don't know when, I don't know where. Spirit, come to me. Spirit, come to me. Spirit, come to me. Spirit, come to me. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Thank you. We have one more we would love to do for you, if there's time. Is there time? Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I would just like to say that that bio said an awful lot about me and very little about my master instrumentalist guitarist, Donnie Schultz, and my master painter, Suzanne Schultz. I mean, <laughs> Suzanne Fredette. They are both changing and making this incredible. 
So you should know that. darkness I hear you calling no longer hidden by distractions of the day somewhere in the darkness I feel your heart beating and I realize I am sorry so sorry Thank you very much. Suzanne, Donnie, Jenny, thank you. Earth, sky, underworld. We do not live below the sky. We do not see the stars. We do not know the solar and lunar standstills. We do not live in rhythmic, cyclic time. Imprisoned by the mechanical clock, we do not know the cosmos in which we dwell. In the hour before dawn, the coyotes appeared, unseen but announcing their presence with a few barks, then more. The howling chorus began, growing loud, coming toward us. We, two humans exposed in the open air, flat on the ground in our winter sleeping bags, presenting ourselves to the cosmos, to the stars, to the marauding coyotes. It is their territory. We have been here other years without this encounter. Why do they appear now with their barks and howls coming close? What do they speak into our ears? This voice of the cosmos, what does it say to us? Thank you. Thank you. We could not unlock our breaths. 
we could not unlock our breasts. As the fingernail moon passed across your green eye, like a shutterfly, opening your soul and allowing me to glimpse forever. It was nothingness, it was bliss. It was joy and God and nothingness. Our breaths descended into moans and from our great gasps arose the golden fields, the magic nights, the infinite existence and love's delight. There it was behind your eye. I saw nothing and I saw it all. Infinity, forever, God, heart and soul. But who are we and what are you? Our bodies press and sweat and shake, great rhythmic quakes of love's highest height. And through this physical eruption blast, the moon passed across your eye at last, setting like a swung open door on the inner side of your iris. Stunned, elated, mystified, I stared through this glimmering sight. And much like the moon on the ocean at night, the light carried forever. I saw, I knew, this was infinity, me and you. Helping her breathe. Subtract each sound, subtract it all. Lower the contrailed decibels of fighter jets below the threshold of human hearing. Lower the skylining helicopters down to the subconscious and let them hover like spiders over a film of water. Silence the rifle reports, the hissing bullets wandering like strays through the old neighborhoods. Let the dogs rest their muzzles as the voices on telephone lines pause to listen, as bats hanging from their roosts pause to listen, as all of Baghdad listens. Dip the rag in the pail of water and let it soak full. It cools exhaustion when pressed lightly to her forehead. In the slow beads of water sliding down the skin of her temples, the hush we have been waiting for. She is giving birth in the middle of war. The soft dome of a skull begins to crown into our candlelit mystery. And when the infant rises through quickening muscle in a guided shudder, slick in the gore of birth, vast distances are joined, the brain's landscape equal to the stars. Would I walk beside the ocean if it lived outside my door? Or would I wallow in my worries about sand upon the floor? I know that I'm not living life as fully as I could. My heart tugs on my mind each day to tell me that I should be out and actively pursuing the things I know that work, like yoga class and walks with friends, or writing in my book. Instead, I tend to have to do's and think about what's wrong, what problems need attention before I can go on. It feels like life is slipping by and I am getting old. The embers of the dreams I've had are starting to turn cold. I need to find a way to flame those embers in my heart. I need to shatter the resistance that holds me here, captive, reactive to the needs and shoulds and have tos, to the manufactured dramas that filled my days in wasted ways, allowing only moments of happiness to creep in and be seen. Deep inside, I'm striving to thrive, but there is struggle there as well. I need to let the struggle go and live, just live, really live. <laughs> but how? How do I walk the Appalachian Trail or live beside the sea? How do I live my healthiest life, the best that I can be? How do I release the struggle that has stood its solid ground for so many, many years? The weight of struggle has worn me down. What if I managed to decide to live life from my heart? What if I follow where it leads, decide no matter what, I'll leave my fears unheeded? and take chances every day. This day could be my last, you know, and looking back, I have to say, there are many things I'd like to do that still are left undone. Many songs inside my heart just yearning to be sung. I really must get started so when all my days are through, when someone looks me in the eye and asks, what did you do? 
I can stand up tall and proud and say, I lived life from my heart. It wasn't always easy, and I had a rocky start, but I made a great decision one March day of one fine year. And since that day, I boldly chose to smile through my tears, to know that I was worthy of a life that's filled with good, with love and joy and happiness, and I realized that I should fill each day with thoughts and things for nourishing my soul. And so I did. And my life was blessed with loving people and satisfying days and dreams fulfilled and walks along the beach and a heart fire burning so strongly that all resistance melted away into the joy of living each and every day. Thank you.